And so this is not a service created by eBay. It's a service provided by the post office that eBay uses. So it's time to go over the May 2023 eBay standard envelope scans analysis. And what this video is about, I do one every month, it's about 10-15 minute video, is I take a hundred random mailings that I did in my postcard store that people bought postcards that I mailed with eBay standard envelopes. So I take some from the beginning of the month, middle, and just random. There's no, just randomness. That's all I do. I don't go in and check it before. I click on it, I put it in my chart, and whatever comes out, comes out. Last month wasn't real good for the scans at all. This month they redeemed themselves a little bit, but eBay was under 90% in three of the scan areas. And they only went up 90% in one of the scans that I track. And I had three no scans again this month. Now the good thing is, I didn't get any emails or do any refunds or claims this month. Normally, when you're under 90%, you get more conversation with buyers and stuff. In the last two months, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't had a lot. Now when scans don't occur, people get concerned and they start sending messages. And also, with eBay standard envelope, the tracking is not as robust as it is with package. You can't give an eBay standard envelope with the barcode to a carrier or at the post office counter and say, please scan for acceptance. It does not require a scan acceptance because they know it's only done by machines at the sorting distribution centers in the post office world. They're not going to pay a carrier or a counter person to scan every envelope that goes through the system. It's it's not doable. And if they did, then there's no reason to have it. So what they're trying to do is give us some type of tracking, some type of better than we had before. Years ago, we used stamped in a label, and it was at our own risk that we send it out. If anybody sent anything, there was no tracking. Now they give us a little bit more. Now, if you want your packages to be shipped with robust scans, done by the carriers when they're delivered and stuff, that's first class and priority. And that's changing in the future too, on some of the things in the post office. But you're not gonna sell as many of these low value cards because people are not gonna pay five, six dollars to ship a four or five dollar postcard. You pick out the best you can. I think eBay standard envelope has been great uh, improvement. And also eBay isn't the only one that uses this. Etsy uses the, I call it letter tracking, and Etsy, when I sold on Etsy, they actually had where you could put in there the size of the envelope stuff, and they would have the same type of tracking. So this is not a service created by eBay. It's a service provided by the post office that eBay uses. It's same with Etsy, and I heard Macari's doing it now, too. I have a little clip I play on every one of these videos, and the people that have been watching this, they can skip over it with the chapters at the bottom. But for anybody new, I have a short little clip here that I played to give you a high, high, high level of how I think it works. And I'm going to go ahead and play this right now. And then afterwards, we're going to get into the graphs that I do and some of the trends. And I'll talk a little bit about eBay insurance at the end. Here we go. Here is a, a slide I'm going to bring up on the big screen. This is just a the process in my head. On there, not real detailed, layman terms. I, I don't know how everything works with this. I can speculate from my uh, IT background, my technical background, but there are so many different ways to do it. But in a nutshell, this should explain to anybody how it works. So the first box there is you got eBay and Etsy platform. They're connected across multiple data centers and so like that. They're not in the same one. That's why it's got the dotted line there. They're two separate companies, two separate platforms. Uh, two separate you know, programs, applications, and stuff like that. They're not shared. But I just put them in a box to make it easier. When someone buys a postcard from either eBay or Etsy, it goes to the post office. The post office then sends data to eBay or Etsy in some way, format a file, web services, some integration is going to go up and going to come down. Either eBay and Etsy picks it up or directly goes in the, into those platforms if they have shared access. So that's your scans. When it hits the post office, it goes back and forth into the tracking on eBay and Etsy. If everything is successful with the delivery, 
it, then you got a happy customer like at the end here. Even though the scans are not happening, most of the time the customer gets the card and they're happy. So that, in a nutshell, that's basically how it works. I did have Etsy on there because I did sell on Etsy when I created that clip. But since Etsy does use this same type of letter tracking, I left it in there. I didn't want to go back and redo the clip since I stopped selling Etsy. I only sell on eBay now uh, as of first of the year, basically. I just got rid of uh, Etsy, HIP, all those other ones. So all I do is focus on eBay. And it, I really like it. So I'm not really concerned about selling on one site. That's where 90% of the postcard sellers are and 90% of the postcards that I have surveyed are on eBay. And the other sites, their sales, just they weren't getting the traffic eBay does. So I put my effort into the place that will give me the best on my return. So with that little clip there, you notice there's a lot of moving pieces. Either the post office sends it, they don't scan it, or eBay gets the data and they don't put it in the system, or they put it in the system or they don't display it right. So there's a lot of moving pieces where you can point the finger. But a lot of the scans lately I've seen, I, I think the data is getting there to eBay, but I just don't, I think they're having problems displaying it or going through and uh, putting the data together. But that's just my thought. But now let's get into the, the graphs of things. As I said, I take 100 random mailings from May 1st to the end of May. And I just go and pick and I put them on my little spreadsheet. Then my spreadsheet builds into a chart. They call them pivot table. And here's the chart. Now here's the different categories that I do. The first column is the state, because I want to know if there's a problem in some states. So that's alphabetical by the state initial. Then you have the label. The label is what I create. It's 100% always because I have full control. When I create an eBay standard envelope label, that is the control number of how many mailings. Then you get to the right of that, and this is where we get into the scans. You put it in the mailbox, bring it to the post office, and it hits the first sorting center. You should get an origin scan. Mine's in Champaign, Illinois. They're not the best in the world as you'll see. So once it gets an origin scan, that's the first place it'll show in the tracking as origin. Then as it moves through the system, you'll see in transit, then you get a destination scan. So I look for the destination scan. If it's in there, it gets a one. If it's not there, it gets a zero. Next one is delivery. That's out for delivery. I just shortened the title to fit on the chart. That's out for delivery. That's when it hit the la one of the last sorting centers and it's going to be out for delivery. Not delivered, out for delivery. If it's there in the tracking, it gets a 1. If not, it gets a 0. And then the all-important delivered scan. That's the one you want. That's the one that people deliver, but that's the one that causes the most emails back to us, the customers. Because it's not actually delivered to the customer when it says delivered with eBay standard envelope. It's still at the sorting center. It hit the last destination and it will take one to two days to probably get to the customer. That's the one I probably get more email on. Then the second one would be, I don't see any tracking, did you mail it? Stuff like that. Then the last column I do the average days that it, that it took to mail it. From the time I created the label to the time it said delivered in the tracking plus one day. I give it one day because I know it goes the next day. I don't give it two, three days because some of them I didn't know the number, so I just do it all the same for every month and I give it one day. So if it's four days from the time I created a label and the tracking says delivered, I add one to make it five days. And if you look there, not a lot of them are too bad. There's one seven, which was Missouri. And there's uh, another one, California, six for con Connecticut, Virginia and Washington were six, but the average overall through the system is five days. Then you get to the bottom down here, and this is where the actual counts up. The first column label, I, it's 100, mainly it's 100%. Then you get to the origin scan, 95%, they miss five. Now remember, it does not need an acceptance scan. It just needs to scan somewhere in the system for eBay standard envelope because carriers and counters cannot scan these. They have to be done at the sorting centers. Only machines can scan the barcode and put it in the system. So 95% for origin scan. Destination, 85%. They missed 15 of those. So as it goes through its journey, there was not a destination scan in the tracking. Out for delivery. 85% they missed 15 of those. So 85% were under 90%. 
Then the delivered, the important delivered, they missed 16. So if you picked up, only missed 15 on out for delivery, then you missed one for delivered, and now you're at 84%. So three of the areas were 85% or below. Better than last month in April, but still, the goal should be 100%. 90% stops a lot of work for us, is that line in the sand I did. So I don't know what's going on, but it is trending back up again in one month. Hopefully it goes back up to the top and it stays there. The average day for mailing in the U.S. Postal Service is five days. So that's pretty good. That's the average, but there is a couple states. Now there is red on this chart, and everybody says, what's the red for? The red means if there's 13 labels created, that I created 13 labels, and any number to the right is lower than 13, it gets a, I put a red mark on there. So if you notice, there's still a lot of red in this chart. We've had I've had charts where there wasn't a lot of red, but this one's it's sporadic throughout the scanning, so it's spread out through the system of the reds, and that's where the states come in. But right now, it's across the board. Sometimes I've seen it where it's only one or two states that are real heavy. The other ones are spot check, you know, spot reds and stuff. But this is this chart is a lot of red, but more than normal in the last time. through from the time I started January first, 2023. This is what the trend looks like. In each one of these lines, the blue one is the origin. If you notice, last month it took a huge dip, way down, and then it bounced back up over 90. Then you get in the other ones, and you notice they're all under. 90% and they've been there for two months. But, I, but I'm not getting a lot of questions from customers. Either they're getting used to it or I got more patient customers. I think it, they're going to get tired of it and start contacting us and stuff like that. So that's the trend. It is moving. It's, it's about flat right now. It's still under 90% but Origin did move back up. Why can't the other ones? So if one place does it, why can't the others? And then we look at the trend for the post office. If you notice, January and February, they're at five days. They had uh, bumped up to six days average in March, and now they're back for the last two months, April and May, back at five days. So basically five days is what it is for the post office. So we haven't seen any major swings too much there. So to sum up May, better than uh, April, but the trend is still there under 90%. Going into summer, the lower volume, I think, for the post office, they it should get better, is what the trend says before the year before, and then going into the holidays and stuff like that, we'll see what it does there. It's not major, drastic problems, but I, I think that they still have a lot of work to do on the tracking side of that. Now remember, if a postcard says delivered or whatever and it doesn't make it to the customer and the customer said they did not get it and you use eBay standard envelope and they open the case you can refund them and then in 30 days you have to wait 30 days from the time you printed the, the, the shipping label that's the date that they use with that ESU code you can put that ESU code into the claim form and if it's not 30 days it'll tell you so they're reading something in that ESU number that tracking from, from the time you did the shipping level, you wait 30 days. I always do 33 to give it there. And before 90, you can submit a claim to the eBay Standard Envelope Insurance, and they will refund you if everything is on the up and up. I've never had one not refunded. I've only had one refund this year, and I got my money back uh, a couple months ago. So last year, I got close to $70 back. And it's nothing that I'm doing as a seller. It just gets lost in the system. In the post, I mailed it. It went out and the tracking showed, then it just got lost and the customer didn't get it. So you refund them and you wait 30 days before 90 and you get it back. This video here will walk you through that whole process. It's pretty simple. You just got to be a little organized on tracking it. And since eBay's keeping more than 90 days now of data in their system, it even makes it easier. So don't think that's a waste. It can add up quickly throughout the year. So check out the video, get your money back, and use it. If we don't use it, they might take it away. We don't want that. We want our money back. So I have no problem refunding people on there. But you got to meet the requirements that they've set forth. Now I'm going to continue to walk through how and 
tracking this throughout the year and every month I'll put a video out usually at the end of the month or beginning of the next month sometime on there so you want to make sure you subscribe so you get the notifications that this came up and it gives you an idea if you're having problems with your mailings just take a look at my video here and we're all in the same boat and you can say hey Mark's not having the problem and I'm not having a problem I'm good or I'm having a problem Mark's not you can compare yourself to what I see on my hundred mailings I'll do the work for you Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.